This video is going to be part one to a two-part series on how to create a 3D top-down player controller. For part one, you'll learn how to make your player move and look in that direction using multiple forms of input. The second part will create a more advanced controller that allows you to move and rotate independently with automatic device detection. This mini-series will help you create a movement foundation for your top-down game. Now let's get started. Okay, so I've just loaded up a new Unity project. The only thing I have here is a ground plane and a camera. First thing to get started is create a 3D object a cylinder. We're going to name it player. And we're going to make sure we reset his transform so he's up on top of the floor. And then move him up just a little bit. Once he's up there, underneath the player, create a 3D object, cube. And then this is how we're going to know which way he's facing when we're starting to do some of the rotation aspects. Scale it down and move it up front. And w once we get to the rotation part, make sure you have it on the Z axis on the front. Otherwise, it's going to make it look like the character is rotating in ways it's not actually rotating. This is his actual front side. So when he rotates, his front side is going to be changing the directions. So make sure it's on the front. Otherwise, it's going to cause you a lot of pain suffering. Come down here. We're going to make it where we can see him much better. We're going to create a material. We're going to make a blue material for our player. Make it a little lighter. And then we're going to create another material for his face. We're just going to make it a black material. All right, so now you have your player. So in order to move this player, we need to create some input actions. Input actions is the new input system. And to get the new input system, you have to go to the package manager. Find input system in your Unity registry. I already have it installed, but you're going to click install right here. And once you install it, it's going to ask you to restart your engine so it can apply it to your uh, editor. Once you do that, reset your editor, come back, go back to your scene. I'm going to go under the player and we're going to create an action map for this player. So come down here. We're going to create input actions. I'm going to name it input manager. Double click and it'll open this up. I'm going to dock it up here. We're going to create a new action map for the player. And we're going to call it move. This is going to be our move action. In order for our character to move, under here, you're going to put all the ways you want your character to move. Just for this tutorial, we're going to do the basic WSD. So we're going to delete this. Right click. Add. Oh, no. Make sure your button is a value. And it's a value 2, so you get vertical and horizontal. Then right click and then you could do a 2D vector composite. We're gonna call this WSD, WASD, sorry. And we're gonna go to up, path, W on the keyboard, S on the keyboard, A on the keyboard, and then D on the keyboard. So this is for our keyboard. So if we want a gamepad though, or a game controller, we're gonna add another binding. We're also gonna call this gamepad and we're just going to get the left stick so now we get the left stick of a game controller and WASD if we want mobile input for this exact same thing go over here create UI image name this left joystick and then we're going to open this up Make sure your event system is the new input system. It may say convert to new input system. Make sure you click that. Otherwise, anything you put in your canvas will not work. We go to our scene. Go to our left joystick. Scroll out so you can see it better. I'm going to put it right over here. New knob. We're going to scale it up. Go over here. And Unity has a built-in solution for joysticks and easy integration with the new input system. We go over add component, on screen stick, type in on screen stick. Movement range is how much your um, your image or whatever it is you set as your joystick will move. I'm gonna set it to 100, I like 100, I feel like it's a good value. And control path, we want it to move the exact same as the left stick on a gamepad. So go to gamepad and left stick. What's the, This is gonna override anything we have for like a gamepad or anything else over here. So it, it'll have the exact same effect. So we don't have to add any other extra things for mobile input. 
make sure you hit save asset. If you don't save asset, it doesn't save automatically and it'll cause you a lot of headache. Go back to your scene, close all this up. And we're gonna come back to our player. In order for our player to take into account any of these input actions we just set up, we have to add a uh, new component, player input, and select the action we just made, input manager. All right, so now we have all of the input actions set up for our player. Now it's time to actually start using those in a script. We're gonna create a new script. I'm gonna call it player controller. And then make sure it's on our player, otherwise the script will not run. Let it compile. And where's our script? Oh, there it is. Oh, oh never mind. We'll add it again, player controller. There, so now our player controller is on our player. We're gonna open it up, reload it, and here we are. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up some variables. And in order to use these variables, we need to have the input system in our namespace. We go using Unity Engine dot input system. If we don't have this up here, we won't access, we won't be able to access any of the input actions that we just created. We're gonna come down here. We only need two variables. We need public speed, make it a float. Public float speed will control the speed of our character. And then private vector to move. This will take and store all of our move horizontal and vertical values from our input actions that we set up. To call the input actions, we're going to go public void on move, and then we're going to go input actions dot callback context. We're going to name the variable context, and then we're going to set our move variable equals to context dot read value vector two. Now we can use our input actions to actually start moving our character. We're going to come down here. We're going to create a new function to control the movement of our player. We're going to call it void move player. And we're going to make sure that we're calling the move player the entire time in update. Normally, you would just put it into the update function, whatever we're going to put in here. But later in the tutorial, we're going to do some more parts and add on to it. So it's easier if we start here. In our move player, we're going to do vector three, oops, vector three, movement is going to equal new vector three, move x, and then we're not gonna be moving on the y axis, so zero, and then move dot y for the z axis. So this is gonna be our position that we want our character to move to. This is going to take in our move dot x and a move dot y, from whatever input we have from our input action. And we're gonna now take this and we're gonna translate our transform of our characters. So we're gonna go transform dot translate with movement times speed times time dot delta time in world space. Now we have our movement all set up. If we go back to our Unity editor, let all the scripts compile. We go to our player, we can set our speed to eight. Now in order for our input manager or the input actions to activate that script that we just made, we're gonna go to our player input and instead of behavior as send messages, we're gonna click this and we're gonna set invoke Unity events. In our events, we're gonna go under player, which player is referring to our action map. And then we're gonna go for move, and this is referring to this action that we have right here. So anytime anything in our move actions activated, so if I click WASD or a left stick is moved, it's gonna call this function right here. For this function, we're gonna set it to our function that we created in our player controller script. So go to player controller and on move. So now, once we click play, I can move with the arrow keys and I can move with the joystick. Awesome, now we have movement set up. 
we're going to have our character move and rotate in the direction that we're moving. This is a really easy solution. All we're going to do is we're going to go back into our script. Right before we move our player, we're going to go transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion dot slurp transform dot rotation. So we're going to go from our current rotation and we're going to go from our current rotation to quaternion dot look rotation. So this is the direction that our character is going to be looking towards. And this is going to be, of course, our movement, which is the direction that our, our this is the point that our player is going to be moving towards. So we want to be looking towards that same point. So plug in our movement. And then right here, this is how fast it is that our rotation is going to change. I find 0.15 as a good value. All right, so now we're taking our movement this is where we want our player to move. We're having our character rotate and look at that point. And then we're having finally the character move towards that point. We're gonna go back to the Unity Editor, let it all compile. Click play. And now we have a fully functional character that points and moves in the direction that we use our joystick and our keyboard. And just like that, you have a fully functional movement script for a top-down shooter. Now, typically in a top-down shooter, you have a script that moves your camera to follow your player. To do this, if you wanna keep rotation on main camera, go to your scene. I already have it set up to be angled at this sort of angle right here. Once you start trying to move the camera though, it's gonna to try to move along this axis. And so it's gonna be really weird. So what you wanna do is you wanna create a camera holder and then move the camera into that holder. And camera holder, we want it to be zeroed in on our player. And then now, our camera holder, we're going to have it set. We're going to make a camera follow script. It's going to stay on our player while our camera holder, we can check our main camera over here. We can change it at whatever angle we want and however close we want without ever having to worry about any weird movement. So we're going to come down here. We're going to create a new script. We're going to create a camera follow. And we're going to open up the script. Now here's a really fast and simple solution to a smooth camera follow script. We're going to come up here, we're going to create some variables, public, transform, target, and this is what our camera is going to be following. Then we're going to do public float, smooth time, and this is going to be how long it takes for our camera to reach the point of our character. So if it's this is a really low number, our camera is going to be instantly changing and sometimes this can be a little jittery so a, or a larger number will look much smoother. We're going to go public vector 3 offset. This is how much the camera is going to be offset from the um, camera holder and then private vector 3 velocity. We're going to equal this to vector 3.0. We're gonna come down into our update function now. If target is not equal to null, so we're making sure that we do have a target. So just in case our target um, were to be destroyed or something like that in the game, it's not going to stop the editor because of an error. It's just gonna skip over this part and the camera will just stay where it is. We're gonna go vector three, target position, where we want the camera to go is going to be equal to target dot position plus our offset. So it's going to take the point that our player is at. It's going to add our offset so we have the camera at a comfortable distance away. And then we're going to take this target position and we're going to change our camera dot position is equal to vector three dot smooth damp transform dot position to our target position referring to our velocity 
with smooth time. Now we can go back into our Unity Editor. And apply this to our camera holder. Good values for an offset that I like is 11 and a negative 13. All right, and then for our target, make sure we set our player as the target. Now if we click play, our camera automatically goes out to the offset. And now when we move, we follow the player. And that about wraps it up for this video. In the next one, we will add to this controller to allow you to rotate independently from the movement and create automatic device detection to ensure the correct input is being used. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. And if you have something you'd like me to cover next, please leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.